High noon in the Arizona desert. Time for an old-fashioned shootout. Eric Forkel is the hometown hero, Tucson's number one gunslinger. Norm Duke has won 13 PBA titles. He's shooting for lucky 14. Ricky Ward has traveled from down south with the look of the champion. Tempe's Jastarook hopes to outdraw them all. Today, we'll see how the West is won. welcomes you to the desert, Tucson, Arizona, to be exact, for the next stop on the PBA Tour. Today, it's the 1998 Tucson Open from Golden Pin Lanes. Hello, everyone. I'm Gary Seibel, along with PBA Hall of Famer, Marshall Holman. And Marshall, these professional bowlers have been at it since Wednesday. It's a long road to today's championship round. Well, it certainly has been, Gary. You know, they started with 92 players. They bowled 18 games of qualifying. Cut to the top 24. They bowled another 24 games of match play. And now we're down to the final four. And left-handers have, in fact, dominated, including our top seed, Eric Forkel. Well, they certainly have. And Eric Forkel, all he did was start out in the lead after the first round and continue to build on that lead. You know, he's right from here in Tucson, Arizona. He'd love to win in his hometown. And it's been since 1994 since he's won a singles title. One of these three bowlers will advance to meet Eric Forkel in the championship match. And our shootout consists of Ricky Ward, Norm Duke, and Jess Stayrug. Ricky Ward, now he's a player who's not easily intimidated. He won earlier this year in Albuquerque, and he's looking for title number two in 1998. Norm Duke, well, he certainly could be considered the class of the field. He has the ability to throw the ball very straight or hook the ball if needed. And Jess Dayrook, he was in very good position going into the last eight games of match play. He had some trouble early in the round, but in the last four games, made a big charge to solidify his position in our telecast. All right, we're set for our shootout round in today's Tucson Open. 37th annual Tucson Open won the first time, 1962, by the great Don Carter. There, take a look at some of the stats on Jess Stayrook, fourth seed. High game this week, 279, average of 228. And he'll be up first in our shootout round. And coming in a little high for Jess Dayrick. You know the first shot is always tough to throw. A lot of nerves, a lot of anticipation for Jess Dayrick. Our TV pair, TV lanes today, lanes 15 and 16. Jess Dayrick getting on lane 15. His second shot looking to convert the spare. a nice conversion of the 4-7. Now we get our first look at Norm Duke, the very versatile Norm Duke. At Marshall, the fact that he is versatile, what exactly do you mean by that? When a bowler is versatile, what do you mean? Well, he has the ability to play the lanes in every conceivable way. He can throw the ball very straight from the outside trajectory, or he can move way in and really turn the ball hard, making the ball hook and dive into the pins. Today, he's opted for the outside line, throwing the ball in a much straighter trajectory. Gets a friendly roll, knocking down that 10 pin. So take a look as the ball hits the hits the pocket. And take a look. Here comes that messenger right into the 10 pin. Good start for Norm Duke. And a look at that replay on the CBS Macan. Up next, Ricky Ward, second seed, had a 300 game this week during the Tucson Open. Great start for Ricky, flush in the pocket. The pressure right now, well, it's on this man, Jess Stayrook. And talking about flush in the pocket, that's when the ball is very, very high, high into the pocket, but not so high that you'd leave, leave a four pin or a six pin. The perfect shot. Jess Stayrook on lane 16. And Jess answers back, throwing the ball Pretty much the same way that Ricky Ward's ball was in the last frame. Nothing standing for him. 
You're going to hear these people yell Duke, Duke, Duke as long as Norm Duke is out there. He's a very popular player and certainly, as I said earlier, very talented. Norm told me his grandparents watch every Saturday, and they're watching with considerable interest today. He's got to stop. Just a little bit high in the pocket, and boy, he just likes to kick himself right now for not taking advantage. Well, we had flush in the pocket, high in the pocket. Well, high in the pocket is just about an inch too far to the left for the right-handers of that flush hit. Ball needed to stop hooking just a little bit more, maybe a little bit left off his hand. Pulled the ball just a little bit. Very good spare shooter, throws the ball very straight, and no trouble picking up the four pin. So Norm Duke converts in frame number two, and Ricky Ward will try his luck in the second. Ricky Ward from North Fort Myers, Florida. Opportunity to take a 10 pin lead over both Jeff Gale and Norm Duke on lane 16. Power strike for Ricky Ward. And Marshall Ricky told me his key here, just trying to stay relaxed and patient. Well, he always seems to be relaxed as far as what I can perceive and seeing watching him bowl. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't show any nerves. Now, you know they've got to be churning inside of him, but uh, you wouldn't know it by watching him. <laughs> Jeff Stabrook, on the other hand, he shows his emotions. He lets you know how he feels when he releases his ball. And not good. Leaving the 6 7. We'll take a look as we see the Mac cam coming in. The ball cuts through the center of the pins, leaving the 6 7. Possible to make. Needs to get the ball to the right of that 6 pin. Hang on, ball. Oh. Close, very close, but it's going to be 9 out and an early open for Jess Stayroom. Excellent try by Jess, ranked 23rd in the PBA computer rankings. One of only three players, Marshall, to have converted the 7-10 split on TV. Didn't get the job done there. Here's Norm Duke. And almost leaves the solid nine. Gets them all to fall down. Take a look at the reaction of Norm Duke. He knows this ball's a little high in the pocket. Just barely does get out the nine pin. So Ricky Ward with strikes and frames one and two. Up in the third now. Looking for a three back. And take, taking a little extra time, Gary. I'm not sure what it was that might have affected Ricky, but he's certainly taking his time getting ready to make this shot on 15. I believe he did go for a re-rack. He has the opportunity right now to take a 20-pin lead over Noam Duke and uh, an even larger lead over Jeff Sabre. 32 pins for the strike here. And he takes advantage. If he's nervous, I certainly can't tell. Well, I'll tell you what, Ricky Ward on the rampage right now. It's the shootout in Tucson. We'll be back. And we're back, Tucson, Arizona, the 1998 Tucson Open. Now for the Alka-Seltzer Friday night recap, where the position round determined who made today's TV finals. Ricky Ward shot seven, the seventh 300 game of the tournament, tournament, and that certainly held his second place seed. You know, it certainly did, Gary. And here's a man who just doesn't get nervous. When he, when he wants to need, when he needs to make the good shot, he just gets up and does it. Great 300, and Norm Duke, he has 10 strikes in a row. He's trying for 300 of, of his own. Comes in a little bit high. It's 289 for Norm, but it certainly helped him to get to the finals. Well, some other highlights. Norm Duke won six of eight matches to go from fifth to third. Eric Forkel, like a finely tuned thoroughbred, gate to wire. And that's this week's Alka-Seltzer Friday Night Recap. And we're going to get back to bowling now, the shootout round of the 1998 Tucson Open. We've got three going head to head to head. And right now, Ricky Ward, courtesy of three consecutive strikes in the first three frames, 32-pin lead over Jess Stayrook and 20-pin lead over Norm Duke. And Jess Stayrook up in the fourth on lane 16. And he strikes once again on lane 16. For Jess Stayrook, it's a matter of figuring out lane 15. He's definitely going to have to do that if he wants to get back into this match. 
And Marshall, Matt Cam replay. Well, here's a great shot, not the Matt Cam, just a good replay of the ball heading into the pocket. And take a look at the reaction of a pro who knows he's made a good shot and was rewarded. Or Duke, he comes in high again on lane 15, but this time gets the friendly trip of the four pin, and that cuts just that cuts Ricky Ward's lead down to only 10 pins. So Ricky Ward now going for a four-bagger, and as you said, Marshall, Norm Duke now down by just 10. Jess Stayrook at 32 pins down to Ricky Ward. 1991, Rookie of the Year, Ricky Ward. Now this time, Ricky Ward leaving the seventh pin. Catch the PBA Tour online. You'll get the latest tournament results and features, plus stats, bios, and chat live with the pros on www.pbatour.com. Sponsored by Clubsworth. And so Ricky Ward converts the spare in the fourth frame. 11th ranked by the PBA is Ricky Ward. Now Jess Staybrook. Staybrook, rather, will start things off in frame number five. Just down 31 pins to Ricky Ward. Norm Duke cutting into that lead down just nine. On lane 15, Jess Staybrook. And certainly not what he was looking for there. Jess Staybrook told me earlier that one of the reasons he's a professional bowler is because he likes to play. And he works very hard at what he does. And we take a look at Jess Stayrook, the second shot in the fifth frame. And what a conversion. What a conversion by Jess Stayrook. We'll take a look at the Matt Cam replay here. Jess Stayrook, an excellent shot. Couldn't have done it any better. And takes out the 10 pin. So now Norm Duke up in frame number five, looking to remain close to Ricky Ward. And a strike. Right now we're going to Marshall Holman, who's with top seed Eric Forker. Thank you very much, Gary. Eric, the opportunity to win here in your hometown, it's got to be exciting. Oh, it's incredibly exciting, and uh, I think it's time to do it. All right, it's been since 94 since you've won a singles event. Is it time now? It is really time now, because if it's not time now, who knows when it's going to be time, and this is the greatest place to win it, so let's do it here. All right, Eric, thank you very much. Gary, back to you. Double for Ricky Ward. It's a bit of a break there. He'll look to convert the spare. So Ricky Ward in frame number five now, and this will complete five frames of our shootout round. And Ricky Ward up on lane 15. And he'll easily convert the spare. So Jeff Stayrook. Next up on the approach. And he's back on his good lane, Gary, but uh, needs to figure them both out. He's got 16 once again. 15 has been his trouble spot. Well, next week on the PBA Tour, we're going to be at the National Bowling Stadium for the American Bowling Congress Masters. Next Saturday, 3 p.m. here on CBS, the National Bowling Stadium for the American Bowling Congress Masters. Join us then. Norm Duke up, Marshall. And he made an adjustment. And look at the fire in that young man's eyes. He was coming in a little high on lane 15. He made the proper adjustment, came in light, rattled the pins down. We'll take a look at Norm Duke as he plays that severe outside line. He's running it out. He knows it's close. Yes. So Norm Duke now in the lead. He's in the driver's seat here. Takes command from Ricky Ward, who's up in frame six on lane 16. Ricky comes in light, leaving the three pin right now. What I mean when I say coming in light is the ball did not quite make it far enough up into the pocket. Didn't get enough of that head pin. The head pin went around the three pin instead of going into it, resulting in a nine pin count for Ricky. 
routine spare should have no problem with this. And Ricky Ward picks it up. We've got a lot more bowling to come from Tucson in just a moment. There's Norm Duke, 15 year member of the PBA. He remembers the first time he ever picked up a bowling ball as we travel down memory lane. I guess I was about five years old and uh, my brother and I talked my dad into letting us bowl a game after uh, their league. And uh, I think our scores were 14 and 13. And I was the victor there. My brother was a couple years older than me. Boy, it was hard on him. As a matter of fact, uh, when we, my father and my mother bought a bowling center in 1972, I guess a couple of years later, uh, my brother really didn't like bowling. And I think that was why, you know? Yeah, well, Norm Duke, with the love of the game and the dedication and uh, all that talent, that's why we're seeing him today. And the youngest player ever to win a PBA tournament at the age of 18. Let's take a look at the scoreboard here, the shootout scoreboard, as we take a look at Jeff Stayrook, who gets ready for his first shot, and hopefully his only shot in training. So. And it was a must-strike for him. He breaks down the 6-8, leaving only the 6-pin, but still trouble on lane 15, never comfortable in that lane. Wanted to be a professional bowler from about the age of 12. He told me that his dad wanted to be a pro bowler, but his dad had three kids, and so basically Jess is living his dad's dream right now. Well, that's, and that's really great. I'm sure his father has enjoyed his career. Jess is a quality player, and like I said, a little trouble on lane 15, but he's won six tournaments, and I'm sure we'll see him again if he doesn't rectify the situation and get it going here in this game. Well, it was all Ricky Ward at the start of our match. Norm Duke showing the power in the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth frames, working on four in a row. Get up his lead on Ricky by 10 more pins, but that was light all the way. Once again, not getting enough of the head pin. Just didn't like the way the ball came off his hand. Now he leaves himself the difficult 2-8 spare. We take a look at Norm. He just The ball was a little right of his target all the way. He's hoping it'll hook up, but never quite climbs the hill up to the pocket. Has to get both of these with the ball. Great spare shooter and an excellent coverage. You can see the tension on his face, Gary. Well, converts the 2-8 sleeper in frame number seven for Norm Du. And opens up the door just a little bit more for Ricky Ward. Ricky started with three strikes. He has three spares in a row. Needs to get it going once again. There he is with a strike on lane 15. Coming up next here on CBS, the Mercury Title Holders Championship. And we'll take a look at the leaderboard, Dawn Co. Jones, 65 in the opening round, her lowest round of the year. Right now, she's got a one-shot lead. But don't you get the feeling that Jeff Stavrick would just soon just stay on lane 16 and not even have to have anything to do with 15 right now? Well, he certainly has his work cut out, Marshall, down 40 pins to Norm Duke, who is now 11 up on Ricky Ward, and he is on fire. Oh, my. 4-9 for Norm Duke. You know, two times already on this particular lane, he's coming a little bit high. And we'll take a look again from our Mac cam. The ball cuts through the middle of the pocket, leaving the 4-9. A split that can be made. He's a very good spare shooter. Needs to get the ball left of the four pin and slide it into the nine. If he does not convert, Gary, Ricky Ward goes in the lead, sitting on the bench. What a great shot from Norm Duke. I told you he was a great spare shooter, but he's even amazing me. What a great conversion by Norm Duke. We'll take another look. Ball hits left of the pin into the, into the nine. We take a look at the reaction. He knows it's close, and he's got it. Almost looked like kind of like a matador move there when he <laughs> saw that he had made that split. Ricky Ward with the opportunity to take a one-pin lead if he does strike up here in the, ninth, in the eighth frame. And that ball, quick off his hand, did not get the proper leverage. The ball never did make the turn back up to the pocket. Once again, another light shot for Ricky Ward on lane 16. Leaving the three and five. 
He'll be 30 years old in July and again had that 300 game last night. He's got a hook. Well, I don't know if he was nervous about that spare, but I had my doubts halfway down the lane, Gary. And he looks a little bit charged up now as well. Norm Duke, a nine pin lead over Ricky Ward, 38 over Jess Stayrook. There you take a look at the shootout scoreboard here in the Tucson Open. Well, with a couple of frames to go, if Jess Stayrook can strike here in the ninth, he sets himself up for a possible 218. He's still in the match, but must have this strike on lane 15. Makes his best shot of the game, leaves a solid seven pin. That's all a professional can do is get up and make the shot. He did what he needed to do, but was not able to capitalize. We see our Mac cam. Watch the four pin. It's going to go around the bottom of the seven pin. That's the solid seven. Second shot of the ninth for Jess Stabrook. There's our leader, Norm Duke, in frame number nine, lane 16. Hang on, ball. And a solid 10 for Norm Duke. That ball was actually a little left of his target, but he was able to get the proper release in order to hold the ball in the pocket. And what I mean by hold the ball in the pocket, to keep it from hooking high. And of course, the mirror image for a right-hander as opposed to a left-hander, which uh, Jess Thayrook had in the ninth frame as well, the solid seven. That's exactly right. No problem with the conversion, but certainly opening up the door once again for Ricky. And it really is coming down to Norm Duke and Ricky Ward right now. Jess Dayrook is just going to be finishing out the game momentarily. Good shot for Ricky Ward. Now with that strike in the ninth frame, Norm Duke cannot shut out Ricky Ward. Norm Duke can shoot 235, Ricky Ward a possible 237. So he holds the trump card right now as far as having that foundation strike in the ninth frame. Well, Jess back up on his good lane, and I think the, the adrenaline is pretty much gone out of Jess's body right now. He knows he has no chance to win. He's just finishing up, and I know Kathy's watching, his wife is watching up in uh, Tepe, Arizona, and was hoping for some better things, but still, a good finish for a nice man, Jess Stabrook. Now, just probably just getting out of the way. He knows it's between Norm Duke and Ricky Ward. Now, Norm Duke. If he strikes in the 10th, 11th, and 12th, Gary, he shoots 235. Ricky Ward, as I said earlier, with a chance for 237. Good looking shot. The messenger comes over and knocks out that 10 pin just in the nick of time. Take a look. This is the messenger. Watch the head pin go to the sideboard, and then here she comes. Important shot. He knows one more, and he forces Ricky Ward to strike twice in the 10th frame. Likes it off his hand. And another great shot. Solid in the pocket for Norm Duke. Norm can tell, as soon as he releases the ball, Gary, he knows if it's got a good chance to strike or not, and that certainly was a, a great shot. We take a look. He knows it's going to be in the pocket. Will it be 9 or 10? It's 10. A little bit of body English to help out that shot, and it worked. And it certainly did work, and, and still yet another important shot. If he strikes here, Ricky Ward would have to get two strikes in the 10th and then 9. So he needs to count. Didn't throw it good, but trips the 4-7. Fortunate. All right, we're going to take a look at uh, Norm's reaction here. Oh, he, he knows he got away with murder. <laughs> well, all the drama's coming down to lane 16 and Ricky Ward. And he, as the number two qualifier, chose to finish on this lane. It's his favorite lane. Remember, Gary, he's come in light numerous times on this very lane. Not that time. There's a great shot from a great champion. Nothing much Norm can do except sit and kind of hope that he gets less than 10 on the next shot. 
Well, Ricky down by eight pins now, needs a strike and nine pins to win. And I can't emphasize enough what a cool customer Ricky Ward has been in this particular kind of situation. I think right now Norm thinks he's going to get this strike. I know I do. Well, Norm, I was wrong, and so were you, and, and I'll bet Norm's pleased. <laughs> Fortunately for Norm Duke, he will go into the final match pulling our tournament leader, Eric Forkel. All right, so even though with the tournament dominated this week by lefties, we're going to have a righty and a lefty marshal in the final. Norm Duke right now counting his blessings. Very fortunate to make it. As we go to our commercial, we'll be right back with our final match right after this. Welcome back to Tucson, Arizona, and CBS coverage of the PBA Tour. And we're taking a look at some warm-ups here for the Tucson Open, the championship match between Eric Forkel, top seed, and Norm Duke. But you know, there were 20 other finalists here this week at the Tucson Open. Let's take a look. Fifth place, Mike Albee, a PBA Hall of Famer who has captured every major title on the tour, but just missed making his second straight TV appearance. Tenth place, Pete Weber, the most recent inductee into the PBA Hall of Fame, unfortunately did not get a chance to defend his Tucson Open title. Fourteenth place, Mark Williams, a two-time winner of the Tournament of Champions, who is beginning to regain the form that has made him a millionaire on tour. Nineteenth place, Dennis Horan Jr. We saw him win his first major two weeks ago as he captured the Bayer Brunswick Touring Players Championship. And at 21st place, Steve Hoskins, the last man to roll a perfect game on a TV final last fall in Rochester, but he had a 300 game this week here in Tucson. Well, you know, if the shoe fits, so should the ball. For more on that, here's Marshall Holman with the tip of the week. When choosing a ball, the average bowler doesn't really think about fit. If you don't come to the center equipped with your own ball, chances are you'll wander the lanes looking for one that feels like the right weight. Well, there's much more to the right ball than simply the right weight. Two key details that are often overlooked are the size of the holes and the length of the grip. When you're fitted in a pro shop, your hand is carefully measured to determine how far apart the holes should be drilled. The pro also determines the size of the holes depending on your grip, the conventional, semi-fingertip, or fingertip with the size of the finger holes becoming smaller with each grip, respectively. You should be aware of what grip you prefer as you search the center for your ball. You'll probably never find the exact fit when you go with a ball off the house rack, but choosing your ball shouldn't be a guessing game. If you remember to pay closer attention to the size of the holes and the length of your grip, you'll end up with a much more comfortable fit, and as a result, your game will improve. Not much room for improvement here. We're set for Eric Forkel and Norm Duke in the championship match in the Tucson Open. Coming up after this message and a word from your local station. We're getting ready for our title match between top seed Eric Forkel and Norm Duke. Appearing in the first and fifth frames of today's championship match is the Bud Pin. If either bowler strikes with his head pin in place, $1,000 will be donated to the PBA Tour Foundation, courtesy of Budweiser. There's the handshake, and top seed Eric Forkel will be up first. You know, Eric suffered a foot injury trying to escape from his condo during the 1994 Northridge, California earthquake. Lost his condo in the disaster, has since moved to Tucson. Not a bad move. That's a good move, Eric. And a good move there. You know, getting that first strike, so important for Eric's psyche to be able to feel like he's in the match right at the very beginning. You know, he never let, he never was anywhere but the lead the entire week. And that's a good place to be, Marshall. All the time is on the lead the entire week, and that's where Eric was. Right now, Norm Duke, the right-handed. And Norm looks very, very comfortable. You know, it's always the advantage to the player who has won the semifinal match. When they win that shootout match, they're hot. You take a look at the power of Norm Duke from our Mac Cam. I watched Eric practice a little bit and he looked a little shaky, but he came up and made that great shot in the first frame. 
Now Norm Duke with the opportunity to take an early 10-pin lead. This is the lane he was coming in high on, Gary. A little more room. Great reaction from Norm Duke. So Norm Duke makes it through the shootout round and now has opened up with a pair of strikes in the title match. Eric Forkel up next on lane 16. Perfect shot from Eric Forkel. Eric Forkel, kind of a bowling by the numbers kind of a player. Gary, he's a uh, very much structured, very, very good practice player. Likes to work on his game, and certainly paying dividends. Eric told me he, he's not a flamboyant bowler, kind of quiet. You have to do whatever it takes. You know, if your if your demeanor is to be demonstrative, as you can see, look at look at that. That's uh, that's a beautiful thing. First, 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 first certainly where he wants to end up after this match. Great start for Eric Forkel. Amazing how he looked a little lost in practice, and right now, he's locked in. He knows it's a great shot. Will it strike? Great reaction from Eric Forkel. They're chanting, Duke, Duke, Duke. Looks good. Was good. If either bowler rolls a 300 game, Marshall, he will receive a $1 million bonus courtesy of the Showboat Hotel, Casino, and Bowling Center in Las Vegas. Both of our bowlers beginning with a three-bagger. Well, I'm not sure how excited they'll be getting, but I know how excited that would <laughs> make me just sitting up here watching. That is uh, that's a large number. <laughs> Norm Duke on lane 15. He's not ready to stop yet, Gary. Four in a row for Norm Duke, and now he takes the 10-pin advantage over Eric Forkel. So far, matching stride for stride. Another great shot from Norm Duke. Gets down low to kind of wish it in there. It was good off his hand. He knew it. Now Eric Forkel trying to match that strike in the fourth frame of one of his own. Beautiful. Unbelievable so far, Marshall. Both guys starting with four strikes, opening it up, and they know about the $1 million bonus. You think that's on their mind at all right now? Not even one bit. Right now, they're concentrating on trying to win a PBA tournament. The 300 game, they may start thinking about that later, but uh, first things first, let's try and win a tournament. First things first for Eric Forkel on lane 15, looking for his fifth consecutive strike. Will it hold? Will it carry? Five in a row for Eric Forkel. Maybe got away with just a little bit of an errant shot there. He throws his shot, he knows it's close, but he, I don't think he was truly sure whether it would strike until they all fell down. And Norm Duke's got to be thinking to himself, gosh, what do you have to do? I started out with four in a row, and I'm down by 10 pins? Well, he is going to have to strike again if he wants to. Hurry man. up. And he does. Oh, big break. <laughs> Take a look at the ball coming in light into the pocket. Scatters the pins around. And this man is demonstrative. So they are dead even. Five consecutive strikes to open up the title match for both Eric Forkel and Norm Duke. As you can see in our graphic, Norm Duke, 19 and five in match play. One of the reasons that he made it all the way to our telecast. He likes it. Solid 10, is that pin gonna roll over and get it? Just a little short. And unfortunate for Norm Duke, made a great shot, leaving the solid 10. And with that, after five strikes in a row, Norm Duke goes to a one-pin deficit as we see Eric Forkel making some adjustments with his thumb hole. You know, the hand swells and shrinks, and Eric's working it out. Well, things are heating up here in Tucson in our title match. We'll be back. Eric Forkel, Marshall, 
frame number six, lane 15, lane 16 rather, five consecutive strokes. To take an 11 pin lead and to keep the 300 going, he does it with a great shot. That ball was perfectly high flush in the pocket. That's exactly where you want to put the ball. We'll take a look from a low camera angle. The beautiful straight arm swing of Eric Forkel and that great follow through. Here's where you want to put the ball, Gary, when you're bowling in practice. Back in Florida, right about there. <laughs> Eric calls himself a bowling workaholic. He is very, very well practiced. A lot of dedication. Doesn't feel that maybe he was the most gifted of, a, of players, but works hard to get the most out of his game. And he's still got it going. That's seven strikes in a row. Five more for a million dollars. Still must be concerned with Norm Duke. Norm Duke is only 21 pins down. Take a look at the reaction. He likes to run him out. Well, for somebody who isn't very demonstrative, uh, Eric Forkel showing a lot of emotion. And Norm Duke has really done nothing wrong his entire match. He left a solid 10 on lane 15, his last shot. And that's the difference right now in the match. 21 pins on that one small solid 10. And because, Marshall, it was a solid 10, that means it was a, a good ball thrown by Norm Duke. It just didn't get that 10 pin down. That's the difference in the match. Well, that's, you know, carrying the pins is uh, sometimes, sometimes a little bit of good fortune in order to knock them all down. All you can do as a pro is make the good shot. That's high, and that's a bad shot. And that's a oh, great oh. break for Norm Duke. Certainly did not deserve a strike there. We'll take a look at this again. That was an unbelievable great break high through the pocket. What comes back to get the three pin? Not sure what pin it was, but it's Norm's new best friend. <laughs> that certainly deserved a Mac Cam look there. And here's Eric Forkel. And I'll tell you what, he is just charging as hard as he has been all week long. And he leaves the bucket. And right now, the million dollars is gone. And this match is very, very much in jeopardy. Not only does he have a tough spare to make, but uh, Norm Duke with that very fortunate double just before that. Three, five, I'm sorry, three, five, six, nine. That's the bucket for the left-handers. A lot of ways to make it, Gary, and a lot of ways to miss it. That's what, that's what makes this combination so difficult. Wonderful conversion. Eric still keeps a seven pin lead. Norm's gotta be feeling like it's meant to be for him after that last strike. What a monumental break at a very, very crucial time. Here's they go into the ninth frame, Gary. Very important to set up the ninth frame with a strike. Eric Forkel, not accustomed to the arena setting that's been used by the PGA Tour. Well, comes right back with a great shot on lane 15. We'll take a look at the approach of Eric Forkel. Foot is perpendicular with the foul line, and we'll take a look at the result. It's a strike. Great shot. Now, can Norm Duke take advantage of that fortunate lucky strike in the eighth frame? Oh, he does. He wants a re-rack on lane 15. And Gary, that shot that he threw in the eighth frame where he tripped out the three pin, it's a difference of 21 pins. Tonight on CBS begins with Dr. Quinn, Medicine Woman, followed by Early Edition, and then it's Walker, Texas Ranger. That's all tonight, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern here on CBS. Well, here's the scene right now. Norm Duke with two strikes and eight. He is your winner. Great shot. Didn't have the problem he had the last time on 15, and really, the shot in the eighth frame was nothing more than just a bad delivery. This one, he was able to hit his target, the ball's going down very, very nicely into the pocket. He says, okay, one more. He won't have any more re-racks. You're only allowed two in any given match. 
and he's used both of them up here at the end of the match. And right now, Norm Duke with a 13-pin lead. Strike here in eight pins. That's got to stop. Sometimes it's just meant to be, Gary. That strike once again that he had on, on lane 15, tripping the three pin out. Just amazing. Trying to calm himself down as we take a look at a replay of Norm Duke. Sticks a little bit at the foul line, but the ball stays in the pocket it, and show a little reaction here, Norm. How do you feel about this strike? <laughs> I guess that means pretty good. He likes it. Needs eight pins for the championship. Martin straight down the middle. There's your champion, Norm Duke, 14-time PBA champion. And for Eric Forkel, really got to be very, very upsetting as Norm does a little more celebrating. You'll know on the on the last shot that Norm Duke threw, he moved very, very far inside and just made sure he hit the head pin in order to get those eight pins. And Eric Forkel with a spare and a strike would shoot 256. And to shoot 256 after leading the tournament the entire way, very upsetting. And Marshall, this is really some redemption for Norm Duke, who had an unfortunate disqualification a couple of weeks ago in Akron. Uh, just missed one of the qualifying rounds, so got to it a little bit late. And he said if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't be in the championship round today. He said this was definitely redemption time for him. Well, he's a great player, both physically and mentally. Another great player is going to finish second, and boy, led every round. And on Pro Bowlers Tour, you know, you're asked to come back and do it again during the telecast. He made one bad shot in the eighth frame, leaving the bucket. That's the difference in our match. So a 279 for Norm Duke to close it out and take the Tucson Open title 1998. Oh. Our champion is Norm Duke. 279, Eric Corkle, 256. We'll be back to Tucson. And so we are back in Tucson for the championship of the Tucson Open. Final score, Norm Duke, 279, and Eric Corkle, the top seed, 256. And there is the winner, Norm Duke, receiving the winner's trophy. 1998 champion of the Tucson Open, his 14th PBA career title. So for Marshall Holman, I'm Gary Seibel saying so long from Tucson, Arizona, where Norm Duke has won the Tucson Open. Coming up next, CBS Sports takes you to Daytona Beach, Florida for live third round coverage of the Mercury Title Holders Championship. CBS Sports coverage of the PBA Tour continues next Saturday with the American Bowling Congress Masters live from Reno, Nevada. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Thank you.